What is up guys, NPS Rick here, back at it with another video. Today's video, we're going to be talking strictly about keeping non-photosynthetic corals. So before we jump into things here, I want to explain that non-photosynthetic corals are definitely not for the beginner Aquarius jumping into the saltwater hobby. Uh, simply because of their extra aquarium requirements, like their required feedings. Because I eat a lot. And their good water parameters. It's definitely a key factor in keeping non photosynthetic corals. And so it's just definitely not recommended for a beginner aquarist. And I'm not saying it's not possible. And if you are a beginner aquarist and wanting to jump into some non photosynthetic corals, I would definitely recommend starting out with the Tabastria species, the sun corals, or even some dendrophilia. Without further ado, we're going to go ahead and jump into a short little tour of my non photosynthetic tank behind me as I explain some key aspects to keeping non photosynthetic corals in the home aquarium. So right in front of you here is my 75 gallon non-photosynthetic reef tank. And I'm gonna explain a few of the species of corals that we have in here as well as invertebrates. And then we're gonna jump into a few key aspects of keeping non-photosynthetic corals in the home aquarium. Now first things first, I do have a few fish in here. I'm gonna kind of go over those real quick. Just some assortment of different species, cardinal fish, pajama cardinals, orange line cardinals, line blenny, that is not a cardinal fish obviously. Uh, squirrel fish, and that's really about it. There is a hawk fish, hawk fish right here. The only thing I don't like about the hawk's fish is he tends to be a little aggressive and he perches on the sea cucumbers and the sea apple quite often. Um, other than that, we have an assortment of gorgonians in here. I am not sure on all the species here, but right here we got a harp coral, and it is a species of gorgonian, but you can kind of see why it's called the harp coral because of its shape. We've got a chili coral, not fully opened yet because it is evening. Then we've got a Christmas tree rock. Right here we've got some telesto coral. The sea apple, sort of sponges back up there, and some more gorgs, another red tree sponge, more gorgonians, and then there's a chili coral that decided to fall off the rock that I glued to, so we'll have to work on that here. And this is an unidentified non photosynthetic coral, I'm trying to focus up here. The polyps are not out right now, but you can tell it's definitely spreading onto the surrounding rock. So without further ado, we're going to jump into some key aspects of keeping non photosynthetic corals in the home aquarium. Sorry, I'm trying to focus up here. Um, one major thing is definitely feeding the corals. Now, feeding the corals, like, that means you're gonna have to feed pretty much almost constantly uh, for certain corals like Dendroneptia. I do not have any Dendroneptia right now, but they need to, they specifically do need to be fed quite often. Now, these Gorgonians, I tend to feed two to three times a day, and if I'm home, I do feed the third time, but if I'm not, usually I just feed two times per day. One decent feeding in the morning and at night, um, I kind of turn the lights dimmer and the polyps definitely come out a little bit more. Now I'll show you my feeding schedule here at the end. We'll go ahead and feed the tank for the night. Um, and one other really big key aspect of keeping non-photosynthetic corals is trying to keep the parameters as stable as possible. And I will guarantee you, you'll probably freak out at first because your nitrates are definitely going to be a little higher than your normal average reef tank simply because you are feeding a lot more than what you would in a normal reef tank. And there is certain ways here. I'm going to show you my filtration system down here. Now we've got all oh, the water levels running a little bit low, but I just got a ProClear sump here. We got two media reactors, definitely helping out with sucking out certain nitrates and phosphates. And we do we got some Kato in here. It's not doing the best at the moment. I'm not sure why. A nice size chunk in there, but it does keep the water parameters very stable. And really, those are one of the two key aspects. And the other aspect is not blasting these corals with light. Um, this is the dimmest setting that these lights can be on without being fully blue or in midnight mode or whatever you'd like to call it. Um, so I kind of keep it on this when I'm like home viewing the tank. And if it's not, if I'm not home viewing the tank, I usually have it on a dimmer setting. But really, that's about it. I mean, we're going to kind of go ahead and jump into some feeding here and show you what I feed and how I feed it. So I'm going to try to show you guys the best way that I possibly can of me feeding these corals. It is a little challenging because i got to hold the camera as well as feed the tank. And if I did it on a tripod, I won't be able to show you the close-up polyp closures of these Gorgonians. So I just have a small little me metal measuring cup. It's easy to measure. i got an ounce of Rhodi Feast and an ounce of ROE. ROE is definitely my favorite product from Reef Nutrition. Just simply dump it in and you could... Coral starting to close up here. That was really quick, actually. You see these small polyp gorgonians grabbing some of the ROE as well. Telesto coral is all closed up. Sorry. 
and you got the C apple enjoying some ROE as well. And then we got the chili coral. It decided to fall earlier today. All closed up, eating some ROE. I gotta re-glue him to the rock there. We got my unidentified NPS coral all closed up. Uh, there's a couple polyps out right now that are feeding the others. I'm not sure what happened. I'm guessing the hawk just perched on them. Look over here. The Gorgonian's all closed up. I'm guessing this smaller polyp gorg right here eats more of the uh, roti feast simply because its polyps are smaller and it definitely be challenging challenging for it to grab the roe so that's pretty much it just wanted to give you guys um a short little tutorial of keeping non-photosynthetic corals it is possible well guys thanks for watching this video i really hope you enjoyed it hopefully we'll see you on the next one don't forget to be the fish keep reefing we'll see you next time